Hello, and welcome to another Cloud Podcast, a podcast designed to bring you stories from the smartest minds in IT, operations, and business, and learn how they're using cloud technology to improve business and the customer experience. All right, Dustin, good to see you, bud. How are you been? I've been well. Thank you very much, Alex. How have you been? Can't complain. You know, it's interesting. We are talking about MPLS and you look at carriers like Lumen, AT&T, Verizon, and how they're in this position of having to write down their business just to keep that client. So they're taking that MPLS client, moving them to SD-WAN, whether it's, you know, Velo Cloud or any of the others that they've partnered with to do that. Yeah. And it's turning into a more of a managed service type solution. I mean, the circuits are circuits with, you know, being what they are, but after that, it's okay, well, now we're managing their, their SD-WAN and it's not so much the client managing all these firewalls and, you know, the right. hardware on site, it's the actual carrier that's doing it. I, th- I think you're bringing up an interesting, interesting point there because I think there's, just like everything, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. But what I hated about MPLS back in the day was as a client of MPLS, your only option was to call in and like open up a ticket and then call and escalate that ticket and like yell at the carriers. Does that make right. sense? For sure. And carriers, as you know, are not the most responsive or the easiest to handle or work with. The joke is that if at and started a hospital, you know, they, they would <laughs> violate all of, all of the things you'd have, you know, people that had surgery and their arms would be coming out of their heads and they'd be shut down by the next day, right? Like they just mess everything up. They're, it's a good thing they, that none of us are in the hospital industry. You change surgeons mid-surgery, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Like one of the things that I love about SD-WAN is that you can have a non-traditional carrier handle the SD-WAN for you. Let me give you an example. So like, like Cato, so you could literally put AT&T fiber in there. You could put spectrum coax as a backup. And then you have, and those are just dumb circuits, right? It's literally coax into a modem. It's fiber into a router, completely dumb. It's either up or down AT&T spectrum. We're not seeing internet come through, go fix it. That's all that we want from the carriers. And then you have this super intelligent box that sits out on your edge. And that intelligent box could be owned and run by your internal team, or you could have kind of that level one, level two type stuff being run by an outside organization. So it gives you that flexibility. What I like about it is it takes all the intelligence out of the carrier and it brings it into a more responsive company like a Cato. Does that make sense? And Cato is just yeah. the one that we're picking on here today. There's plenty of other companies that sure. can do that as a, as a service. But I do love that model because you're not waiting in line for an hour and a half to talk to a level one tech at one of the big LEC carriers. Right. And because there are multiple options, as we know, with SD-WAN providers, not just Cato or there's Big Leaf, Viptela, Silver yeah. Peak, all of them, right? And so the big question becomes now is, well, what... If you hitch your wagon to a certain carrier, they typically only have one that they've hitched their wagon to, right? One of right. the big, one of the big ones. So now it becomes yep. you're working with the direct rep at a carrier, and they can only pitch one. But how do you know that that's the best SD WAN solution for your company? Sounds like you're leading towards a broker question. A little bit, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Why work with a direct <laughs> rep when there's six to ten different SD WAN providers out there? But how do you know which one to go to? Because Lumen yeah. or at t only pitches one. And it's absolutely true. And, you know, our, our goal as a broker is to understand our specific client's needs and then be able to find the best option for that specific client. So like just before uh, you invited me on this podcast, we were, we were trying to decide between Meraki and Fortinet for a specific client but they're really small. They don't need a lot from their firewall. They're not in a high risk industry. You know, it's brick and mortar, pretty simple business. Um, And the Meraki is just so much easier, end user friendly, throw VPNs on it uh, so people can work from home. Like it seemed like the right decision for them. 
and it was more cost effective. So we're yeah. always as a as a broker, as a consultant, I'm always trying to figure out what it is that's best for the person that I'm sitting in front of right now. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because our goal is to align ourselves with the long-term vision of the organization and the business outcomes that they're looking for. I'm not married to a box. Uh, I think there's plenty of great box makers out there. I think Cato, Palo Alto, Fortinet, Meraki, but they're all different. I mean, if you mentioned the name Big Leaf before, how interesting that Big Leaf as of the last that I heard, they're just doing SD-WAN. They're not even heading down the SASE route. They're literally like, yeah. we're going to do one thing, just one, and do it better than anybody else. We're going to do the SD-WAN part. The whole security, everything else is so someone else's, it's another box's problem. So it's a really interesting model. And there's just so many different ways to do this. And it's not a one size fits all. Yeah. It almost seems like it's the as a service model because it's becoming so simple to deploy you find your SD-WAN provider, say it's a big leaf that only does SD-WAN. Well, now it's like, well, what do I do for security, right? Over and above, say like what a normal firewall could do. And then you right. go find your supplier over there. And typically it's a managed service security provider. And they'll yep. be able to walk you through start to finish and ongoing support with security. So then it's just plugging in these different systems. But I think that's where you see a big difference with a direct rep versus working with a broker is that how, they don't know what they don't know, only what's well, only the Kool-Aid that they've been forced to drink for during onboarding and sales kickoff meetings on, hey, go with this, it's the best. And like, they start drinking that Kool-Aid, they get all hyped, not realizing that there actually is competition out there that is as yeah. good and a lot of times can be better than, a, than a, what the director right. sells. So it's, it's a really hard line to toe when you're, a lot of salespeople that are good salespeople still wanna do what's right for the client but yep. they're forced into not doing what's right for the client because they can only push one solution. Yeah, it all comes down to comp plan, right? Yeah. They're, they're incented to sell for the brand that they're employed by. And they, there's no incentive to find the right solution. Whereas for guys like you and I, we're blessed to be in a spot where it's like, hey, we're, we're on your, we're on your side of the desk. We're going to go out. We already know, we already have an idea of what the market has. We'll narrow it down to those top three and then let's get in the weeds and really find out who's best going to align with your goals and get you a great solution. So, and it's just impossible to do that when you have yeah. one thing. I mean, before I was um, here on the broker side of things, we were selling, just one phone system. It was a Shortel phone system. And I remember walking into a building down in San Diego and the guy came out and he was literally wearing a Cisco shirt and he gave us the runaround for like three meetings and then straight up ghosted us. And I was like, dude, if you just wanted some pricing to beat up Cisco, like just shoot me an email, send me pricing for, yeah. you know, a bunch of phones, like save me the time, energy and effort but it was a deal that we were never going to win. And I was trying to fit a short tail system into a complete Cisco environment right. and it was just never gonna happen, right? Whereas when you have all of those different options, you come in like, hey, what do we love? What do we hate? One of, the, one of my favorite things about um, having all of these op options, and you and I have been on calls when we do this, we just, I, I love asking the question up front of a client being like, hey, is there any carriers that you hate? They're yeah. like, oh yeah, at my last job, these guys really, you know, they took down the whole network for a day. Don't quote them. Okay, right. great. We'll take them off the list. Um, and then when we're presenting quotes, we can give the good, bad, and the ugly about these different options that are out there, right? So mm -hmm. it's not... We don't have to paint the picture that like, hey, if you go with this one supplier, everything's going to be rosy for the rest of your life. Right. It's like, hey, this is the pros and cons of working with the biggest UCAS provider. Ring Central, you know, yeah. they're fairly organized, but they're not very nimble. And it's hard to be nimble yeah. when you're a huge organization. That's just the nature of it. Um, you know, uh, Dialpad, I kind of have a little bit of a technology crush on Dialpad right now. They're claiming to be UCAS 3.0, right? Like this mm -hmm. whole next level. 
but it's, you know, it's, they're not even really talking about polycom phones. At one point they weren't doing any handsets on the desk. They just like right. didn't do it at all. They're like, everything's going mobile. Now they have that option to do it. But I, I just think that you can say like, hey, dial pad's really good at this, but they're not as strong at this. And but, you you can give both sides of it. Yeah, and that that's a good point because when, as VoIP was first coming on the market, it was all a me too. They pretty much all had the same features. There wasn't a lot to distinguish one carrier from the other. Ring really was able to do that early on by being having everything where everyone else was playing catch up. But right. now, like you see like a dial pad and you see these carriers looking for how can they di differentiate as technology is growing with AI and like just like as with dial pad, they're with their video conferencing, they're adding more where you can track if people are not paying attention. You can, you know, they're doing transcripts. And so they're taking yeah. that Zoom call and they're taking it to the next level of adding a lot more value. So it does differentiate them because they have to. Absolutely have to. Yeah. It's, it's a really fun time to be in the space. There's a lot going on and I would not want to be an IT director, VP, CIO, just like trying to navigate these waters by myself, like without any anybody to like come alongside me and just kind of help me navigate the waters. Because there's carriers that were doing a really good job two years ago and are terrible right now, just their installs are getting ripped out left and right. And then there's carriers that you and I wouldn't, wouldn't have proposed a couple of mm -hmm. years back that are kind of top of the list and front of mind for Some are listed and they have big investors yep. behind them and they're buying up other companies to make themselves yep. better. And where I'm seeing a big change with that is you have all these UCAS providers that are now, well, we have to have a contact center solution. Right. What are we going to do about that? Do you partner with one of the big, call it the big two, Genesis or InContact or TalkDesk? Yep. Or... Do you acquire a smaller company that doesn't really have the name brand recognition, but it's, you can have, it's all home baked and you're, you own it. Own it. Right. Where do you see UCAS like going over the next couple of years? In a way I see it going to the, com where it's going to be like a commodity, like circuits. If okay. you don't innovate and, and change, if you just yeah. stay stagnant and stay with those me too features like a lot of the cable codes have come out with like, you know, solutions like that. But mm -hmm. I think the big ones are looking towards AI. They're looking towards bringing in contact center. They're getting better at their collaboration. So mm -hmm. it's not just, I mean, look at Ring Central getting away from Zoom and having their own collaboration now. But, right. you know, one of the biggest, I say disruptors right now that we haven't even mentioned is Microsoft Teams and where that's going and how every carrier UCAS carriers scrambling to get a direct integration, direct routing with Microsoft yeah. Teams and where and how that's going to disrupt. It's, uh, it's, it's absolutely already disrupting. I am uh, web chat, web video, like it's pretty impressive what they've done. And then you just overlay some voice yeah. over the top of it. Where does Cisco go wrong with WebEx? I mean, it feels like, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry if Cisco guys are listening, but right? Like what went wrong? I'm going to shoot from the hip here. I don't have a patty up to her. <laughs> I've never been opinions. asked that question. Yeah. It's yeah, it's, it's one man's opinion. Uh, here's what I think though, is um, WebEx was like the only option at one point, wasn't it? Like 2001, it was, yeah. WebEx was like, I worked for a competitor called Centra Software back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, and we were mainly focused on kind of the education side. So it was like, hey, how do we do these types of calls and then save right. it into a repository, blah, blah, blah. When you get hired mm -hmm. as a podcaster, you get to take Alex and Dustin 101 and it, like you save it that way. But WebEx was huge, came onto the space, blew everybody else out of the water. Um, you know, I don't, I did a lot of WebEx. I don't know. I, I guess the guy from Zoom was at WebEx. He was like, we've got to make this cleaner and better. And they're like, it's fine. We're good. We're the number one one. We're the number one guys out there. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, that's fine. I'll go start my own. Well, uh, fast, fast forward a couple of years and, you know, 
there are stocks trading at a gajillion dollars and it's being used by every school on the planet. I think it goes into the companies that are trying to, they're trying to be nimble and change, but they're so big, it's hard. I mean, Cisco's a hardware provider. They have their Cisco PBX, they have their all their hardware, their ASAs. And now it's like going to the cloud, right? Yeah. Where you have companies like Ring and Vonage that started in the cloud or in the- Born born in the cloud and I, and just like Zoom, right? So you have a company that just has a completely different mindset. It's more of the hardware side versus the software. And that's probably where Microsoft on the software side was able to win with teams because they already, they know that model. Yeah, I like that. Um, I absolutely think that's the case when it comes to the, the Cisco side. They're, they're, they make a lot of, a lot, a lot of money in their model. And this is just kind of a different model for them. So they're definitely playing some catch up for sure. Yeah. And I know they're pushing hard on WebEx, like um, some of our some of our carriers, TPX specifically works with the Cisco. And so they're rebranding everything, their whole phone mm-hmm. system is WebEx. And then the contact center is WebEx contact center. Cisco has like a cult following. I never joined that cult. So I'm not a, I'm not a full on ABC guy, like anything but Cisco ABC, but I I am (laughs) probably heading that way. I don't know. It's just too much of a, all the cool kids love the Cisco. And I think they make great land and WAN stuff, but I'm definitely not the guy that's going to go out and get a Cisco tattoo anytime soon. Yeah. They, they love the enterprise. And I think that's where, that's where they survive right now. Yeah. And it's wildly complicated, right? It's super hard. It takes a lot of brain power, manpower to set up, maintain, but it also is super flexible. It can do anything and everything that you possibly wanted it to do. Mm-hmm. So it's a great enterprise solution. Exactly. And that's where yeah. we see in the mid market where, the as a service solution, whether it's UCAS or contact center or SD-WAN, it can be offloaded, frees up time for the IT department so they don't have to hire more people to program whatever it is they need to program. So I was on a call yesterday. I haven't told you this story. I was on a call yesterday as a service. We're on with Call Tower. Call Tower is like in their presentation, they've got a couple different slides. Number one's like, you know, who we are. Number two is like, uh, you can get this from Microsoft Direct. Number three is you can build this yourself. My client was literally like, no, skip. I don't (laughs) want to hear it. I don't want to like pass. And then it's like, hey, we've already built this out. We've been doing this for the past 20 years. We built it out on Skype. We built it out on MS Teams. We know how to do it. Just leverage us. And he's like, that's the one that I want. Yeah. Like get it off of, get it out of my world into your world. Here's a credit card. Let's, let's get moving. The easy button right there. And that's 100%. where, and that's where call, call tower definitely hitched a wagon to like that one solution. Right. And just made it. Right. And it's worked yeah. great and it's hard to beat their offering. And there's no one else that can really do it as well as them at this, at the moment. I definitely think they are a leader in that space. And they just have so much telecom knowledge across all of the different mm-hmm. platforms that they represent. MS Teams being the one that is just taking over the whole entire space for sure. Yeah. And like you said, all the UCAS providers are like, hey, we integrate with MS Teams. Right. Like, cool. Yeah. Through a third Everybody. party half the time, which they don't tell you. Right. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The hidden secrets that we know as brokers that yeah. sales reps don't want to, direct sales reps don't right. want to tell it's a direct yeah. integration ish. Ish, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, you need to you need to know what the truth is out there, right? And that's that's for what sure. we try to provide for our clients. So, so the next two three years, where do you see it going? You asked me that earlier. How about you? I expect to see some consolidation. I don't know exactly what that looks like. I see a little bit of price compression, but I don't think we're there yet. You know, I feel like you see price compression like. Maybe at the end of the decade, we'll see more price compression. It's still a wildly profitable space and there's still so much more opportunity, right? Let's say that even the high number that I have seen is that it's 35% penetrated the market. 
So it's still 65% of people have not moved to this. Yeah. And out of the projects that I'm working on right now, the vast majority of them are not on a UCAS cloud solution. They're on a premise solution, right? I'm seeing that that 65% number be pretty accurate. I don't think we're going to get a ton of compression until we have 80, 90% market penetration, which should happen in the next three to five years. Vonage Ring, Log Me In, 8x8, Fuse, Dial Pad, any of those guys would gobble up a couple of players just to get the market share and right. um, customer base. Uh, we haven't seen it. And I think one of the reasons we haven't seen it is because it still is so profitable, right? You know, hey, right. if, I'm right. a, if I'm a small guy in the space, it's like, hey, we've only got, you know, a couple thousand users, but we're still making like huge profit numbers. So like, why go anywhere, yeah. right? Like, let's just keep making the money, sell some more. I do think that there is going to be more technology pushed into this going forward, just like the AI transcription, engagement numbers, and stats when you're running stuff. I know that some yeah, of the cool. um, webinar webinar platforms have that Zoom, and I think the Log Me In one has it already. Mm-hmm. Uh, always a little sad when you do a webinar and then you find out that only half the people were paying attention for half of the time. <laughs> you can at least you can at least change your uh, your approach, right, and start doing song and dance to get people get the maracas, right, and get people listening. Yeah, a exactly. Bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, Dustin, it's been a pleasure. You are the inaugural guest on our Another Cloud podcast, episode one. I was here at the beginning. (laughs) We'll get you on again and we'll continue to talk shop. We'll bring some other Sandler guys on and looking forward to it. Sounds good. Well, that wraps up the show for today. Thanks for joining. And don't forget to join us next week as we bring another guest in to talk about the trends around Cloud Contact Center and customer experience. Also, You can find us at AdlerAdvisors.com, LinkedIn, or your favorite podcast platform. We'll see you next week on another cloud podcast.